Hey scholars, it's World Civ. World Civ is technically a freshman class. I know some of you aren't freshmen. And uh, as a freshman class, it's an introduction to the university, an introduction to how the university thinks in many ways. And so today is a sort of a broad class in which we're actually looking at the second of the two greatest uh, structures of thought, structures of uh, institutional, it's two greatest institutional sort of structures, political and educational, that comes out of the Western civilization in the ancient world. First is Republican government, which is around the world all over today. Uh, separation of powers, term limits, uh, uh, vetoes, elections, the idea of uh, uh, pol politics is built around the consent of the governed, where power actually is in people to, to out of to separate uh, and not keep power centralized too long in one place, and uh, that Republican government's a great you know it's now you saw all around the world. Uh, China is the People's Republic of China. Now, the uh, other greatest uh, sort of uh, institutional structural idea to come out of the ancient uh, out of the medieval world out of the West is is universities. Universities are now structured very similarly all around the world. You have this undergraduate program, uh, which is broad-based, and then a graduate program more narrowly. It's a curriculum. You run through cur curriculum. is a term for running through a group of courses. You reach the end, and then you are awarded with a certificate or license somehow as to having uh, accomplished this so that you can then use that to get jobs or to serve the state or uh, other things like that. So, so this is a, a basic model, but there's also all sorts of deep ideas within universities which are now come around to the modern world. So that's what a class today is about. It's basically introduction to this idea of the university. Uh, you have a video on there that talks about specific uh, events during the Middle Ages and stuff to create universities, specific places. And then what I had you read was this book by me, which is sort of broader sort of appreciation of universities, but also sort of a broader understanding of how this idea of a university is distinct in, a, in the Western, uh, Western tradition. Uh, in Western tradition, we have these towers. This is Sather Tower at Berkeley. That's UC Santa Barbara's Stork Tower. This is the tower at ours. And uh, these towers tend to uh, refer to the Platonic, the, you know, the, the pursuit of truth, which is true and it's good and it's a beautiful thing about working and living at universities is the pursuit of truth. However, if you take Plato too far, which is one of my big criticisms of the book, is, is that Plato leads in um, directions which uh, don't make sense for being basically practical for the earth. Universities are really much more Aristotelian uh, here. It's hand out like this. Arist Aristotle is this person who we first find this term uh, of liberal arts and arts plural. And these liberal arts don't necessarily agree with each other. They actually are different skills that go in different directions and do different things. And uh, uh, Augustine becomes the great center of promoting the liberal arts into the Christian medieval world and the foundation of sort of Christian education. And with this liberal arts, as I propose in the book, better than towers uh, is probably at every graduation ceremony, uh, every graduate should be given a Swiss Army knife. Uh, Swiss Army knife, all these different little tools, you know, and they all, they all come together. They're not, a, you know, but at the same time, they do different things. And uh, your university education, much more like this. And the biggest issue of the book, and really uh, to help us sort of look back and see how this works, is to look at um, how history is treated differently in different disciplines. Natural history, the sort of biology, natural history, or geology, those kind of natural history matters done over there, a completely different type of method than the history that we do in the history department. Foundationally, and within the history department, we rely on human testimony, and we, you know, things that were uh, like we would 
the only reason we know that certain countries exist uh, is because we're told those places exist. I haven't been to Madagascar. Um, you know, no one has has knows anything about certain things like uh, like the Battle of Salamis that's told to us in Herodotus, unless we believe Herodotus. And so, so uh, same is true in the Bible. Is is that uh, Christianity relies on historical thinking because we wouldn't know anything about Jesus. We wouldn't know anything about what he said or taught, especially we wouldn't know about his death and resurrection without that being transferred to us by testimony, human knowledge, chains of from the eyewitnesses through hearsay down to us, and then it gets written down various ways. History is that kind of field where we deal with what people did and said, and we don't just sort of make up uh, sort of models, where there's big models uh, in, um, that we have to work with in uh, the natural sciences. And so you have, you know, uh, evolutionary biology is a very historical, uh, very big idea about how history works. And then we have historians over here. And so Christianity here and, and uh, Darwin there uh, go in different directions, but they don't necessarily uh, not, you know, they both belong in the university. They both belong as part of this larger pursuit of truth and such within this worldly situation we have where we don't, you know, attainment of, of pure truth is not going to happen on earth. And that was one of the great things of Augustine's perspective, which was to see us as in an earthly world where, yes, we want peace, but we, you know, on earth there's going to be war. And so church and state have to come to agreements about just war uh, and the codes of just war, and come up with practices of just war. And that's the way the universities work. We've come up with practices of, of rationality, practices of reasonableness, uh, systems where we can uh, agree to disagree and things like that that go on down here and we don't pretend to have that final final knowledge uh, that would then you know where we can exclude people so uh, just quickly to get through this just to introduce you to the book is is that I gave you a little video it talks about like the birth of Paris and stuff here's Cambridge and Oxford up here there's a uh, the, you can see the dates here. The dates are, you know, uh, show that there's a, a sort of birth of uni universities. And these universities are, uh, as the video points out, sort of a, a, a guild, a union. Uh, it's like, a, um, uh, like the, uh, the American Bar Association. You have to pass the bar and then they, they say you're part of us. You, you have a license. And what this license is, is to make you a, a clerk a person who is part of uh, society's scholar bureaucracy, the people who are supposed to keep the church going, the state going, uh, advance and practice medicine, and advance and practice the law, and, and advance especially practice of theology and things like that. So baccalaureate is, you know, you're a bachelor, getting a bachelor's degree, which means that you're sort of the beginner, you're at the lowest stage, of what is a, a guild, a uh, sort of, you know, you're at the apprentice stage, moving up into that master, and that's why then you have master's degrees, and then you have PhDs, and, and then these funny outfits that we wear, these are all uh, rooted in uh, medieval Cambridge and stuff. They're really sort of romantic things all developed later, especially the stripes and the, the funny hats and the other things like that, but, but they're all supposed to be sort of a Let's pretend we're medieval. And it's true because this is where the university comes out of, is this medieval world. And what do you come out as is a secretary. This is why I love that term scholar bureaucracy, you know. Because you're a secretary. And uh, secretaries can be people at the bottom rungs of society, you know, file cabinets and stuff like that. But secretaries can also be like the president's cabinet person in charge of foreign policy for the United States, underneath the President of the United States, is the Secretary of State, Secretary of Treasury. These are, it's the highest position. So secretary means that you're a type of servant, a bureaucrat servant, and, and so uh, universities are to produce these secretaries. And as the term in Latin and in the Middle Ages, you have clergy, you have secretaries that are working for the church, and then you also have 
you know, this uh, clerks, clerks in England, stuff. All of these part of the clerical staff, you know. Uh, it's, these are all the same terms, church, state, business, you know, that, that the people who make the bureaucracies work are these people who are educated in the liberal arts, these people who have the pocket knife. And, and so uh, you get great poems like this about the Oxford clerk. You know, this is Chaucer's introduction to his Canterbury Tales, uh, you know, this, this guy who loves to read as Aristotle who turned to getting knowledge long ago, as meager was his horse, as a rake, nor he himself too fat all undertake. But he looked hollow and went soberly, right? Threadbare was his overcoat, for he had not yet no churchly benefits, no church job, nor was he worldly. He didn't want to gain a political office. He would rather have at his bed's head his Aristotle and his philosophy. He didn't want rich robes. He would pray for the people who gave him scholarships. And uh, what his goal was, was to ultimately teach which is, I guess, my goal too. So, so the thing is, that's what the university was. It's, it don't, we shouldn't think of it as pursuing you know, truth in some sort of like thing like this. It is a Aristotelian working thing. And Aristotle, at the end of his politics, says that the job of the public, you know, the job of the state is to have public education. The education needs to be the job of the state because you have to develop citizens. You have to develop productive people. Definition of a citizen is someone who participates in like juries and voting and things like that. So that's what we're doing here is, is getting you started in this process, which is to make you a sort of um, licensed citizen of the, you know, of the world in a productive way, in a good way, in a not an exclusive way or anything like that. And so I wrote the book. And I wrote the book uh, to try and do this in a fun way. Uh, and so I wrote it as a, as a, a pilgrimage to, uh, to a place up in the mountains with, this is Mount Darwin here. And, uh, you know, I, I wrote it a long time ago. This is this boy here, Matthew. He's now 30 years old. And Stephen's now 28 years old. My daughter, Elizabeth, uh, this is at another 14,000 foot peak. Uh, my daughter Elizabeth there, she's married and in Iowa now and stuff. This is Bill Wood, who is often uh, uh, teaches World Civ too. But, but this is uh, John Muir Trail, and uh, Mount Darwin's up here, and we came in from this direction. Here's the Blue Heron Lake I talk about. Mount Wallace, Heichel, Fisk, Huxley, uh, Lamarck. Mendel, these are the mountains of the evolution range. We have these, you know, dedicated to the, you know, the scientists, you know, and stuff. And then John Muir Trail goes down through Evolution Valley. And so uh, I use this geographical spot and a hike in there to basically talk about what are these big issues of being at a university, which you are, even though we're a little university, we are one of these universities. So let me, uh, you know, uh, here's the biggest issue is, is this is a weekend book. Let me get that focused, huh? Uh, focus. There. This is a weekend book about a weekend trip. I write it out of a classroom obligation to be Greek and Christian to help students be reasonable, rational, honest, and about their faith in an age when universities have a powerful role of defining what is reasonable. I write with the hope that students will, in various ways, learn that the academic life is a journey and not a destination, that academic disciplines are divergent paths, not all leading to one place, and that it, yes, that's the pocket knife. And then in universities, it is reasonable to believe that the history of Jesus, along with the history uh, proposed by Charles Darwin. So, uh, this is what we're doing in this class. And, and so I wanted to, to uh, I, I, you know, it'd be fun if you email me with any questions or comments out of the book or, you know, what you want to do with, but, uh, you know... Uh, basically, I'm trying to head up to Mount Darwin, which is, looks like that, the pinnacle at Mount Darwin. And uh, we talk about Darwin himself and 
other things that are sort of fun. A lot of different issues come up along the book. Here's where, uh, you know, there are many Greek academic tools for reasoning. That's this theme of the book, is this many Greek academic tools for reasoning. Aristotle was not like Moses, giving law to Greek rationalism. He was a pocket knife kind of guy who tinkered with reasoning tools and strategies. He was amazingly broad-minded, the founding father to modern academic disciplines ranging from zoology to psychology to logic to politics to history. Christianity's best anchorages in universities are Aristotelian. And so, so this is what, um, and I talk about these, this mainly this Aristotelian way of doing history, as opposed to a more Platonic way of doing modeling, uh, um, uh, modeling uh, evolutionary biology. So in uh, modeling, you know, the best way is I, <laughs> GPSs were sort of brand new when I wrote the book. So, uh, so I wrote about GPSs uh, and you know, GPS does like what celestial navigation does, which is it uh, posits a spherical Earth and a center of the Earth and then a spherical celestial field and then sort of calculates latitude and longitude. This is all fine and good, but you and I know the Earth is not a sphere. It's actually a sort of pear-shaped thing. It also wobbles. And so this idea of, of a latitude and longitude is a, it doesn't work in a pure form, it works in a practical way, but we tend to confuse our minds and we think that latitude and longitude and, and things like that and our GPS is telling us some sort of, I don't know, absolute truth or something. No, it's not a mathematical, it's not a geometrical truth, you know. It's, this is a, uh, we, we have a model of the earth, we don't have the real earth in our GPSs. And, you know, just the same thing, it's, it's, the GPSs will tell you, you know, this is, uh, this is where north is. Well, that's a serious problem. North wanders around a lot. Uh, the, first of all, the North Pole uh, jiggles up there, and then also magnetic north wanders quite a bit, and we do not know how magnetic north what is gonna wander. So there's just, uh, uh, a lot of the sciences do a great job of giving us a model. And this is certainly Darwin's view of evolutionary biology and stuff. Is it's a model for how they think under certain conditions these, this would have developed this way. You know, given this, they then posit by a sort of rational model that this must have happened. And it, you know, hey, it's not a bad, uh, most science works this way. My dad was a meteorologist, talked about that in the book. Meteorology's great. It's a model of weather that, you know, if we get uh, gather all this data, we can model it, but it, it's limited. We can only model to a certain distance into the future, and then we're in trouble, because we just don't know. History is another model. History depends upon our trusting people. And this is where I talk a lot about how we have to trust uh, the Bible, we have to trust, uh, we cling to words. And so in that sense, uh, read the book. I meant it to be fun and easy and uh, enjoyable. It's, it's not long and it's not involved. But at the same time, if it sparks your interest, come talk to me or, or email me or do whatever we have to do in this situation right now. i uh, love to talk to you. But ultimately the goal is simply that you understand that A, these universities all around the world today are founded in a Western Christian tradition of liberal arts that uh, gets uh, institutionalized in the Middle Ages in a very distinct way, which still comes down to us. And second is that this, this there's a lot of uh, romantic ideas about pursuing truth and truth, you know, use your logic and we'll all agree with each other, but those don't work. And uh, what we have is a much more diverse system, a basically a pocket knife way of getting at the world. And pocket knives are amazingly useful, but at the same time, they're, uh, uh, they have their troubles. I just have a little weird pocket knife. Look at this one. I have one that goes like 
it's a Gerber. It has its own little thing here and it does different stuff here. It pulls out a little, here's the screwdriver. So our little universities, <laughs> didn't plan this, but it, uh, our little, little universities right here, you know, this is who we are and that's what we do. And and somehow biology is one of these tools and history is one of these tools, but we don't necessarily always agree.